Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlamagne the God, Angela Yee, Envy had to step out for a second, but we got a special guest in the building, man. Steve Lacey, what's happening, brother? Nothing much, man. It's pretty early. I can me. tell you don't like early mornings. I can tell that's early morning that's higher right there. He might have not gone to sleep yet. The black hoodie, the shades, it's like, oh God. No, I'm really happy to be here. This is uh I watched the show a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Well, shout out to Baby Sam. She was going hard. She was like, We gotta make sure because you are on this sold out tour, even having to add dates to some of the, the venues that you already have. So it's important for us for you to be here too. Oh, thank you guys for having me. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about that. How does it feel like for you to have the success that you've had? You have a number one song right now. That's true. Um, <clears throat> I don't really know. It's hard for me to take things in, especially when I'm like in tour mode. So I don't know. I'm like grateful, but you still working. Yeah, it's like I don't know how to take anything in right now. It was number one was for two weeks in a row, right? Two weeks, yeah. Wow. Today's Monday. Might be three. Yeah. Might be three. Did you just expect the success of this song when you recorded it? No. <laughs> no. To me, I mean, I never think about that when I'm making music. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I've been making music for years, and I think to me it's always just been just a process of getting better at making music. Mm -hmm. So uh, that song, um, I just felt it was a relatable story and that it just felt good to me. Right. That's it. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's kind of the message of that whole song. What? So was this inspired by real true life things or any particular yeah. incident? Yeah, I always feel like that about people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I wish I would have said something. Yeah, because <laughs> I see somebody, I'm crushing on them, and just be like, oh, they look cute. And then be like, okay. And just keep walking. Why that's don't you say something? Part, yeah. I don't know. I mean, but, that, but that's also the thing about energy, right? Like, you know, if, if the energy says no, sometimes you got to leave it alone because sometimes it may be just a comment like, oh, that looks nice, but no need right. to, like, no, the energy's not saying go holler at the person. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, uh, yeah, that's enough for me. Give him a compliment. Just keep it moving. <laughs> when is the last time you've been in a situation where you just had to holler, though? I don't do it. Never? <laughs> he no. bites his tongue. It's a bad habit. Wow. I'm shy. <laughs> I'm really shy. I'm trying to think. Yeah. Probably like, it'll probably be like through a friend or something. I'll be like, who's that? Yeah. You know, I got the like, the okay from the friend. I'm like, okay, I'll try and say something. What Gemini characteristics do you think you have? All of them. Because Geminis are a little crazy. <laughs> and they're very manipulative. <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> All the Geminis yeah. I know. And they can use their powers for good or evil. Yeah, that's true. And they really have two different personalities. Mm, yeah. So what are, you, what are the ones you said when you say you have all of them? What are they? Like, how hard is it to leave the house and not act like Kanye? <laughs> well, that's easy. <laughs> 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 he's, he's him, you know. He's Kanye. But we're pretty different. Mm -hmm. Pretty different. Y'all had a relationship, too, right, at one point? Or... Yeah. Oh, yeah. working relationship matching, or matching tattoo with him. You and him and little Uzi. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that just happened. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So we yeah. here forever, technically. Yeah. Did that age well? <laughs> <laughs> Ask myself this question every day. <laughs> it was just two weeks ago, sir. I know. <laughs> yeah, you know. I don't know. Is that an actual friend? Would you call him a friend? Kanye. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it was exciting when he said what he said about you, how, you know, how amazing you are as an artist. Yeah. No, he was kind of definitely a huge part of uh, um, kind of me getting to it on this album. Because I was around, I, feel like I haven't said this on anything, but I'm on Breakfast Club, so I can say it. I feel comfortable. Um, but I was like kind of like a ghost on, like Donda, on Donda around that time at the stadiums and stuff, and I never experienced nothing like that in my life mm -hmm. and you know I would just get these different tasks like first I'm there because he liked my drums so I'm there programming drums he's like we need Steve Lacey drums on the whole album mm -hmm. so I like program drums a bunch of times and then um then I had like the duty just like reproducing some songs and then it was just like this whole journey but I would always do my job 
and then go leave because mm-hmm. I was like working on my album. And yes, you know he always noticed me um, when I would leave. So he called you like out five days. Yeah, <laughs> and then now I gotta go home. Where you at? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we kind of maintained a relationship over the, after that, but I think just watching the process of just like that collaboration and having so many hands on your stuff, but still mm-hmm. it being yours, you know, was super inspiring. And I think the the work ethic and like the the bars element to um, just the thing, like the whole like kind of like hip hop thing. Mm-hmm. I kind of took that when I left that thing and went went to the studio, worked on mine, and you know just kind of applied all those notes that I had. What'd you do with the uh, White Lives Matter shirt he sent you? I ain't got one of those. Okay. I ain't got one of those. <laughs> Did you make some good connections? Because there were so many artists there, too, and producers and other people working. How did that help you? Um, We just stayed friends. But no one on that worked on my record. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, some good relationships came out of it, for sure. I saw an article you did in the Washington Post, and you talked about how you're just trying to stay cool and comfortable, but also grappling with, you know, newfound fame. So what's been the biggest adjustment to to fame? I don't know. I mean, I mean, it's privacy for sure. It's not being able to do certain things or having to be super aware of who I am all the time is uh, it's kind of weird. Yeah. You know, because I feel like I'm someone who I like to do like regular, regular ass things like um so having to be reminded of the perception of myself sometimes, all the time, is kind of like Ooh, overwhelming. That's a hard one. Reminded of the perception of yourself. Yeah. Because the perception of the perception that people have of you is never really truly who no, you are. No, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, really, you know, the goal is just to be like a blob of energy, right? Mm-hmm. You just don't want it. You just want to exist, mm-hmm. right? Solely as whatever the fuck you want to be in that moment. Mm-hmm. So you know, I'm always trying to be there mentally and you know sometimes it could feel limiting that perception of self um when it comes to like what other people might think you know so but i try my best you know in my interactions to kind of delete that too and just be like you know i'm whatever i am right now Mm -hmm. you know um but yeah it's it's i don't know i think it's still something i'm adjusting to every day and i think every day is different and every place is different to how they treat fame and famous people yeah one thing i don't like is um when people like sneak photos or something of me Uh, like without speaking to me like just say hi and like i'll probably be down to take the photo but don't just like or if they post it later like saw steve lacy in the airport yeah like (laughs) that that makes me super uncomfortable Mm -hmm. and it's it's scary yeah yeah because i feel like people plotting on you yeah exactly like you know (laughs) yeah now, also, we, um, early on, the internet. So what's yeah. going on with that? I know a lot of you, you did, like, solo projects, but is that something that you guys are going to come back together and do something? You know, I'm not really sure. Is it something you are talking about? Is there, because it feels like, you know, people aren't sure what's happening with the internet. Is it Right. Like, you know, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm going to keep it a buck. If I, it was up to I you. I legit have no idea. If it was up to me, mm-hmm. I mean, I would make another record. Yeah, I mean, I just love making music with everybody. Is it static between the group? Or? No, it's it's chill. It's just, you know, everybody's kind of doing their solo thing right now. So mm-hmm. It's hard to say when the next thing will come. And that's all, I mean, that's big being that, you know, you, you're having a lot of success for the fact that you say that there's a, that you want to do another album. Yeah. Because you might ask other members and they'd be like, well, it's Steve. Steve's too busy doing his solo thing. He's, <laughs> he's like, number one record, you know? No, I don't think it's like that. I don't know. I really don't know. It's because it's hard to, um, I think nowadays too, to just be all together at the same mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. You know, just schedules is crazy. Like I'm on tour for the rest of the year. Wow. This is yeah. your second world tour, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How does this differ from the first one? Very different. Very different. The first one was, it was like a DJ mm-hmm. and me like playing the instruments. Um, but it was just like super raw. Um, and this is just different because uh, it's like, you know, Bad Habit and 
it's just a, I think it's just like a huge shift of like just kids mm -hmm. at my shows and stuff which is cool yeah. I often wonder, like, you know, uh, is it, you know, I was just talking to Ed Sheeran about this, is it hard to just sell music nowadays because people want so much of your personal life? Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you're kind of selling, I mean, maybe it's always been that, but it's like you're selling, like, a story, mm -hmm. right? You know, like, something to be a part of. Like, as any type of brand, you know, it's like, why are you, why do you want to be a part of this mm -hmm. brand? Um, so I do feel like maybe now it does require a little more, like as an artist, mm -hmm. um, like you need the like persona, mm -hmm. right? or, like the character of like who you are and with the music on top of it. Mm -hmm. you know? Like, I don't know. I mean, maybe I, I would still be popping if I had none of that too, but mm -hmm. I know that the persona of Steve Lacey is also something that comes along with the music. You, you give know? me a Prince vibe. Oh, I appreciate the that. The way you move, uh, you know what I mean? Like I got a Prince tattoo right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, word? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah. And even some of the music gives me, a, uh, Prince is my favorite artist of all time. He a Gemini too? Yeah, so like I said. Shady as fuck. <laughs> shady, you give me the shady energy too. So. All right, in an honest, in an honest <laughs> moment, okay? I could be a little petty. Would you, you say know. in relationships, normally it ends because of you or because of the other person? Ooh. Sarate. <laughs> I don't know, maybe me. Okay. Probably me. That's an honest moment. Yeah, I'll probably, I'll take it. I'll take that. Probably me. Mm -hmm. And why is that? I don't know how to do relationships yet. I'm 24. Right. And plus, I feel like my foundations are always faulty anyways. So I feel like... Ooh. That's, 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 that's some self-awareness. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like my relationships don't start in a good place that will like give us the longevity, you know? So I, I feel like I'll reach a point where I'm like, just trying to find shit to just be like, oh, okay, this is getting on my nerves. So what, when you say that, do you mean like, like they started with maybe just sex? Like Yeah, like exactly. You're supposed like, to be just fucking, you wanna fall in love. Right, and then I'll be like, okay, you know, whatever. Like I'll just do it and then be like, okay, what the hell? And it'll be months <laughs> and I'm like, wait, what the hell is going on? <laughs> and then, I just I just be gotten got a dip, and then come back maybe and do it again. Yeah, I definitely be I double back. Well, if you write a song I about me, I quadruple back. I come back. <laughs> if you write a song about me, we go together for a long goddamn time, okay? Because they say Gemini writes is about uh, ex boyfriend, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You can't write a record about me and tell the world it's about me and then expect me just to leave, Steve Lacey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't talk. What? Yeah. After writing a record about him? Yeah, we don't talk. Did he hit you up about that? I played him the album right before it came out. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of stopped talking. Because right you probably didn't express none of those feelings to him. You probably just did I it did. in the music. Oh, you did? No, okay, I okay. did. I did. I was very vocal about what was okay. going on. And I was like, this is what I played in the record. I was like, this is how I was feeling and stuff. That's got to be hard, too, though, for you. Because, I mean, like, you make that album but then you go out there and perform that album so you're constantly thinking about said individual yeah yeah well i feel like i wrote it in a way that could have been applied to anyone or mm -hmm. anything so you know it was kind of a fluid thing of not saying anything specifically to this person to make it more about me yeah and less about him or does that help you with the healing process of breaking up definitely really this album specifically helped me get through it real hard mm -hmm. real hard Mm -hmm. Um, there was this moment, I think, that like shifted my relationship to like journaling and uh work where it was like two weeks after the breakup, I was really pissed off. Mm -hmm. The intro with the the static song, like, baby, you got something in your nose. I was like super pissed off. And uh I had just got back home from New York and um I had these like ceramics that I like made that were at his house on the table on the table on my marble table in my house and my sister was house sitting for me so I'm looking at this 
bag. I look inside this bag and I'm like, wait, how, how the hell do these get here? So I call my little sister like, yo, how you get these? She's like, oh yeah, like we just got lunch and like he told me about everything. Da, da, da. Wow. And I'm like, why the fuck you getting lunch with my little sister? Like y'all not buddy buddy. So I'm like, you using my little sister to like get to me like da da da. Like that's my family. Like so I was like, uh. Uh-uh. You ain't clear the ceramics off like that. right. No, exactly. In that <laughs> moment, I really wanted to do something crazy, you know. And then my friend Alan, shouts out to Alan, he was like, yo. You can't do shit about this, mm-hmm. you know. And I was like, "Fuck, this nigga low key right," you know. So I was just studio, studio, calling my friends, ranting to them, um, and just went in the studio. And then I did that bass line, played the piano, and then just kind of freestyling. And then that song came about. But that was like the height of it, you know, like. Just high emotions and yeah. just like getting it out, you know, producing those records and writing them like fully in the in the emotion that I'm in. How well, do static, you feel you about said, the song Static then since you were talking about, you know, I love that wrote. song. Yeah. If you had I think it's hilarious. shining for your lover, dump that <laughs> fucker. I think it's hilarious. Yeah. It's hilarious because I got these sixteen year olds singing the song. I'm like, Y'all don't even know, know what, what the hell about. I'm talking about. Like the first bar, I'm talking about ketamine. They don't even know what ketamine is. Right. The drug, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sniffing that K, that's a K hole reference. Let me. So you know, I think about that too, because think about how many songs you grew up K-hole. listening to, and you had no idea. <laughs> Hold on, now we'll just be. What you're about. <laughs> I'm like, where's the K hole? A K hole. You know what K hole is? No. That's when you do too much ketamine, and you just kind of like a zombie, like you can't move. It's like paralysis. Oh, uh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, K hole. So that's Imagine. a real story. No, I mean, not for me. I uh, wasn't No, not K-hole. for you, but I'm saying because that's not about you in the song. No, it's not about me. I was kind of... No, it wasn't about me. <laughs> I've said too well, much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's funny because I'll be at the shows, these kids, baby, you got something in your nose. I'm like, and they be singing that shit. I'm like, y'all don't even know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But bless their little hearts, though. Are there songs that you grew up listening to that now you look back and you're like, oh, that's what they was talking about? Because you think about some of those songs. I think about some of the songs. I don't... There's a movie that pops up in my head rather than a song. What's the movie? Um, Fucking uh, Bamboozled. Okay, okay. okay. You ever seen that movie? Yeah, hell yeah. With Damon Wayne. Yeah. Lee joint. I tried to watch that as an adult, and I was like, whoa. Because as a kid, I just loved Savion Glover. <laughs> so for me, I was watching that movie being like, man, the tap dancing in this shit is so dope. And then now, you know, I think I was like watching it the other day. It's a bit of I was a like, message. oh, shit. <laughs> the tap dancing was associated with something whole. But yeah, I didn't even, I was just like, Savion Glover, <laughs> you know. But now I'm like, oh, wow. And you, you, see, you see this a lot in the industry you're in. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> now, what I about that line? That... If you had to stunt your shining for your love or dump that fucker, did you, you ever felt like you had to turn your, your, your light down? Yeah, definitely. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you made you feel. But I don't I don't blame them for doing that. You know, I blame myself too for mm-hmm. cuz I could have spoke up. I could have been like, "Hey, I'm not feeling like this or, you know, yeah. this is making me feel this way, but I feel like in my past relationships, I would just get nervous and then just be like, "Uh, this is making me feel this way, but, you know, I'm not the type of person that is like, you know, you did this, you did this. I'm always like, you know, Okay, what's my role? I actually look at myself first. Like, mm-hmm. okay, okay, what's my place in this? You know, in all situations. Yeah. Um, I think all Gemini should do that because it's usually their fault. But continue. Yeah, you know, and I'll, I'll, I. The thing about me, as a Gemini, is <laughs> I know when I'm fucking up. You know, and I'll be like, I'm, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Now know? Gemini say I'm sorry, but they have like excuses, and they'll still blame it on you, and they'll be like, <laughs> I'm sorry that. <laughs> you feel like I did this instead of just saying I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I've done that before. <laughs> yeah. Now, when you made the album, did you think about, like, because I don't even know what category to put this album in. You know mm-hmm. how they're like, this is this genre, or when you get nominated for a Grammy, this is the genre that this would go in. Right. So when you think about that, like, how would you categorize it? <sighs> That's a good question. I really don't know. I really don't know. Yeah, I've always had a weird relationship with uh, genre. Mm-hmm. 
because I feel like I'm always making all type of stuff and I'm inspired by so many things. So I'm like, yeah, the genre is weird for me. Do you care about things like Grammys and nominations? And I mean, having a number one song, I know you care about that. Well, the thing, here's the thing. I didn't care until I was number two. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you said, whose dick I got a suck, a suck to get to number one? Yeah. I found it. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> Who do you have to suck? <laughs> no, nah, nobody. It's a joke. I, yeah. I don't know if that's a joke or not. This is the industry. <laughs> you can't just throw things out there like that. You keep on getting number one. That, 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 that dark world on the YouTube is going to say, say, see, Whoa. Steve Lacey said you just had to suck somebody to get to number one. Oh, uh, man. No, because I, I, I was at... When I was at number 100 and stuff, I was like, okay, like that's dope. I Me made the it billboard. to the charts. That's yeah, dope. I'm like, cool. Then we had 50 some. I'm like, okay, that's like in like two weeks. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And then we in the top 10. I'm at number eight. I'm like, okay, cool. That's what's up. And then we had number two, and I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> now I want the number one, you know? <laughs> but I wouldn't think about that. Well, congratulations, you know. though. That is an Thank accomplishment. You. Very Who, much an accomplishment. Like, how many people are ever going to have a number one song? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm super grateful. I'm like, what the fuck, you know? Um, but do I care about Grammys and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's another thing. Like, I feel like, again, I didn't care about that till I got nominated. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you You're know? like, hey, this you, could happen. Yeah, exactly. So... You have to have been nominated as a producer before, though, right? A lot of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably every year since I got first nominated. I've probably been there. What was your first nomination? Ego Death. Really? Ego Death. And okay. that was the first piece of music I ever worked on. Like, so the first thing I ever worked on went to Grammys. Like, I was there with my mom and like, this, like, $150 suit from downtown. Nice. <laughs> I'm sure you still made it look fresh. Yeah, you know, I did what I did. <laughs> I now, I remember I all of us being, I mean, still are uh, excited about the internet because it was like we, we hadn't seen a hip hop like band since The Roots. Yeah. You know what I mean? So y'all yeah. were like the first. Yeah, no, that oh, was. the first since The Roots, rather. Yeah. No, that was that was the first thing I ever worked on. And I remember, um, you know, I had the co executive producer credit on that. And at the time, I was still in high school. Wow. So I didn't know, I didn't know what the hell that meant. Mm -hmm. You know, co executive producer. I'm thinking like, if you get that title, it's probably everybody in the band. So I'm like, okay, like I don't know what to make of it. Matt called me one day. He was like, yeah, we're gonna make you co-exec. I'm like, okay, like whatever, you know. Um, and I remember on the hard copy of the CD, I saw it. It was like co-executive produced by Sidney Bennett, Matt Martians, and Steve Lacey. And I was like, oh, that must mean like I did something substantial on this. Yeah. But I had no idea. Mm -hmm. That caused problems with the rest of the group? Nah, nah. Okay. Nah, it was fine. And and then you started producing for other people. I know you produced for Solange and mm -hmm. Kendrick and Chloe oh, and yeah. Cole. Yeah, so those records, see, I went to the Grammys. Well, I think when Damn was nominated. Well, Damn got nominated, so I had a nomination for that. Mm -hmm. I produced Pride. And then Apollo 21, I was nominated. Uh... And then Vampire Weekend, I was nominated. Mm -hmm. uh, there's probably some other things I'm forgetting about, but yeah, I've been I've been nominated a couple times. What, what feels better, being nominated as a producer or nominated as a as an artist? I mean, definitely as an artist. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Because at the time too, I thought I was like, I feel like I knew I didn't do my best on that album, mm -hmm. so I was kind of like mad at myself, and in a lot of ways, I thought that album was a failure for me. So really, yeah. Cause I knew I knew I could have spent more time on it. Mm -hmm. I knew I could have did more. I knew I could have edited more. So I was kind of like sitting with that and being like, "Shit!" Like I just rushed this. I was too antsy to put something out. Cause I'm seeing everybody else. I just had this weird pressure on myself to just be like, "Drop this shit," uh, when I didn't need to. Um, but I still did it, and it, it came out. Did what it did, you know. And I still ended up at the Grammy. So I was like, "Oh, you know." Imagine if I gave it my all. Right. No, Imagine that was if I gave a fuck. Yeah. No, seriously, because mm -hmm. I feel like I wasn't, I wasn't caring. You know, I, I kind of was in this like, oh, whatever, like, fuck it mentality, you know. Um, and I think I had to, you know, do the, all the quarantine shit, you know, yeah. just sitting around and really um, seeing, okay, when the world opened back up, who do I want to be or like 
what do I want to work on right now? And, you know, I feel like I went in to do work that would get me out of this, like, oh, yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, I was like, yeah, I actually do care, you know. And I feel like I started consciously calling myself an artist um, when I was working on this album. I was like, oh, this feels like my first album as an artist, you know. Because it was weird being a producer, being in a band, like all these things kept me from going as hard at being my own artist. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to make a conscious shift in my mind to say, okay, I am an artist. I do care about this. And, you know, I had to look at the core of like why I do what I do anyway, you know. <clears throat> and, you know, I had to, I realized that I have respect, you know, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. Respect like for, like, people having respect for you? Or? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, and I realized, I found, like, a new confidence in music um, that without ego, though. Ooh. This confidence of my love for something. I was like, I could be confident because I'm someone who loves music, and that's where I get my confidence because I realize there's a lot of people who do this shit for the wrong reasons, mm -hmm. you know? But I'm like, I'm a person that would be doing this shit regardless of the number one, regardless of the Grammy nominations, like I will still be in the studio making music because that's just what I do. I wonder, you know, because I always see that with like extre extremely gifted, talented individuals, the, the thing that they suffer from the most is motivation. Mm -hmm. Because you know how they say uh, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Most people who aren't super talented have a crazy work ethic, you know, because mm -hmm. of the lack of talent. But people who got that super talent don't necessarily have the work ethic and they got to motivate themselves to yeah. get up and go do what comes easy to them. Yeah. No, you, I definitely got to find it for myself. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. But I try to make something every day. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a beat or just a melody on a song, I'm always going. Mm -hmm. I don't stop. You need more breakups. More what? More breakups. Ah, no more breakups. <laughs> <laughs> You're enjoying a single life. Yeah, you know. And knowing that you can always double back. Yeah, but I be falling in love, though. <laughs> so it is your Really? Okay. Are you a cancer cusp? N no. Okay, okay. I'm a Taurus cusp. Okay, okay. So mm -hmm. I feel like my Gemini is very adventurous, and then my Taurus, I got a Taurus moon mm -hmm. doing that type of shit. And my Taurus moon just be like, just chill with this person. They got enough. They're comfortable. And I'd be like, yeah, you right. I'm going to just post up with this. Damn, you a problem. <laughs> I know you're tight, bro. You a problem. <laughs> okay, <laughs> y'all, this earthy shit. Oh, all right. <laughs> making these people fall in love with you, oh only to God. just leave them high and dry. No, I don't leave. And then them write a song about them. I don't Steve. leave people high and dry, Charlemagne. I really don't. I be, I be caring. <laughs> that's what you tell them, and that's exactly why they be in their feelings. I be, I know, I really be caring. Okay. <laughs> Karen, caring, caring. So you care Karen. about you care about, <laughs> so you care about every Something there. you care about all your past relationships. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. The last one. I'm sure we'll, we're gonna be friends sooner or later. You think so? Yeah. I hope I don't he learns the rap. Huh? It, I hope he learns the rap. <laughs> yeah. Makes a diss record about you. Yeah, I would love that. <laughs> I would absolutely love that. You that feel like, sick. and you said this on Sunshine, like trying to keep your emotions in check. Is that something you feel like you do in relationships? You don't want to fall in love? Or is, you just can't help it? I feel like I do. I love falling in love. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. You think it's real or you think it's more like lust? That's the thing. I don't think I've fallen in love before. Okay. Hold you on, just now. Like... you just said you like falling in love. You <laughs> see, see, see it's not really love. Yeah, I call myself. I call myself the bullshit. You see? see, you know you done fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> you told me you loved me. <laughs> 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 it feels like love in the moment, but it's yeah, really it love. does feel like love in the moment, but it does turn oh, out to be man. you know something else. It's like when Scooby Doo, you know, when they got the monster on, you know, it's like love on his face, and then you take the mask off, and it's like ah. Oh, Fucking lust. <laughs> we got him. Wow. That's how it is. You just pissed off every single past boot. <laughs> well, the thing is, you know, yeah, I haven't, I haven't fallen in love. There you go. But I still be, I still love these people though. Right. I still I got tell love them for like, them. yeah, I'm like, I still tell them like, I love you though. <laughs> I don't know if I've been in love, <laughs> but like what we've been through, you know. 
But I still love Stop you. Stop telling them stuff like you give them the world. <laughs> How about that, Steve? I mean, I will. Yeah, no, you will give them a state. You have to say the world, a city. <laughs> Can you have yes. the whole state, a whole world, Steve? I got to give the world to everybody I'm with. Do you feel like people around you have changed with your success as a solo artist? You know, because now it's like, he got money. He's number one, you know, going on these sold out tours. Right. And things are different. You know, I'm blessed with people that are not gassed up by this shit at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even my family, like, is super regular. Super regular. Um, which, and I think that's what makes it hard for me to be like, I don't know the difference between any of this stuff because the tone of my life is still the same. Like, I still, my friends, we do the same things. My my family still treats me the same. Like, yeah. What about labels? This is a person as a, as a per. Like, what do you label yourself? Because you see bios and they'll say, "Oh, he's ha he's he's black. He's Filipino. He's bisexual." Right. It's like it's, it's, all these things. Yeah. Man, I'm just Steve. Does any of that stuff affect the content of your music? Or is it just, it's like, nah, love is love, like, you know? Yeah, you know, I feel like I'm one of those people that are less vocal in talking about what I'm doing, but rather, like, walking, like, everything, you mm -hmm. know? Like, whatever I'm feeling at the time, whatever I believe, you know? I'm going to just walk in it, and you're going to feel it, mm -hmm. rather mm -hmm. than being like, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, you should do this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to spread it. I'm like, mm -hmm. I just want to exist. Like, that's always been my goal. Mm -hmm. Like, I just want to exist. I don't want to speak for nobody. I want to speak for myself. I just want to be peaceful, and just leave me a fuck alone. Because I feel like all of that could be a lot of pressure when you're too much. When you got to speak for all of these different communities. Yeah, and the thing is, is like you can't. Right. You can't. Like, we all have so many different upbringings and stuff. So, who am I to assume, you know, your experience, you know, and put it in this box of mm -hmm. experiences and claim it as something, you know? I never tried to do that. Mm -hmm. So, I'm like, and I don't let nobody do that for me. All right. So. Yeah, you said you've been doing this, obviously, you know, since you were 17 years mm -hmm. old. And you've met a lot of people already, even at an early age. So what's yeah. been exciting for you? I saw you on the cover of Billboard, mm -hmm. you know, um, and that interview had to be really fun and dope for you. But what, what excites you? Like, when's the last time you fanned out? Hmm. What excites me? I really don't know. I mean, I think just making music with different people. Uh, like when's the yeah, last something time you made me excited, but it's too early to speak on right now. But ooh, ooh. <laughs> what's his name? Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, no, nah, it's just it's an artist. Mm -hmm. She just hopped on one of my songs. Ooh, okay. Oh, it's not out yet. It's not out yet. It oh, literally, she just sent me the version last night, so I can't talk about it yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a new song. Okay. It's a new song. But it's on the album or? Nah. It oh, was okay. going to be on the album. I wanted her. Oh, it's for their album. I don't know what it's for yet. But so the album, my album came out obviously. And um, yeah, I was t I was talking to my label before like, hey, I really want to get this girl on this song. Like, I love this. I love her. And then it didn't happen in time. And then after the album dropped, uh, she was like, she loves the song. Wow. I can't um, wait to hear you and Rihanna's collaboration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was, me and Rih went crazy. That's gonna be incredible. Yeah, you said it. You guessed it. It's Rihanna. <laughs> That's gonna be incredible. Do you find it easier to have the label reach out, or do you ever try to just DM people? Because sometimes no, artists... I'm straight up. Mm -hmm. I've always been like straight artist to artist. There's only been let's see, yeah, I think only Solange hit hit me up through my manager, but after we met, it was straight artist to artist connection but I prefer to be in touch with um, whoever I'm working with because I feel like my art is so close to me mm -hmm. um, that I don't like to work through people um, so we're going to appreciate this interview in the future and the reason we're going to appreciate this interview because I know what type of artist you are 
the, you're going to blow up and nobody's going to be able to find you. You're going to disconnect from the world <laughs> and you're going to be one of those mysterious mm. what happened to Steve Lacey guys all you want to hear is music and nothing else and touring you you predicted that yeah I do plan on doing that it gets tiresome right a little bit yeah that perception of self shit bro I'm always trying to run away from that do I get it? it though but I'm I am honored to be here you know I was really nervous I was like man Charlemagne gonna fucking troll me bro <laughs> I don't know. I was like, damn, he gonna find something. He gonna fucking yeah. But no, it's been chill. Do you enjoy social media? I think you do a good job on yours. Yeah, no, I feel like I enjoy watching the chaos. I don't enjoy being <laughs> in it. I like well, to you watch. You keep hanging around thing. Kanye. You're gonna be right in the midst of it. Oh no, no, no. Are you gonna keep that tattoo? Yeah, it's a fun story. Tell my kids. So was it like just a random, let's all just get the you? Yeah, we was drinking some Casamigos, <laughs> shooting those shades. I came randomly. What the hell is shooting shades? His, those little, those easy shades. Oh, got you, got you, got you, got you. So we, he was doing like a campaign for those. So I was just shooting those, taking photos. And then the homegirl Mez was there. And we just ended up getting matching tattoos. Me Whose idea was it? It was like a collective, we all going to do this. Type of thing. I made music with phrase? Uzi afterward. Uh, I think Ye did. What Uzi was the phrase? Ye Something did. about we here forever. We here forever. Yeah, it was yeah. Uzi said that. Okay, we here forever that. technically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that means like through music and art, like you through art. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Got you, got you, got you. Yeah. And you said you and Uzi recorded music afterwards? Yeah, we did. Wow, we did. How many songs? Bro, we pushed out like five. Wow. For whose project? Just in general? Or? Well, Uzi just make music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's it. Is he one of your closest people in this game? No, I haven't. Before that moment, I haven't seen Uzi for a couple years. Mm -hmm. Probably since like 2018. I met Uzi in the studio working on Neon Guts, actually. Working on the what? That song, Neon Guts. Young, oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. With him and Pharrell, I met both of them that day. But that was the last time I saw Uzi. Really? Yeah. So it was it was good to see him. We always keep in touch, though. Um, Y'all had a, a, a very good relationship with Mac Miller, too. Yeah. That's one yeah. of the first times I heard about the internet, being with Mac. Yeah, that was, like, one of the first, like, celebs I ever worked with. Mm -hmm. I was like, whoa. When well, he embraced y'all, he saw y'all online, or? Well, he was friends with the internet before I came around, so I oh, think. Oh, got you. They had just came up. They was working on music together. Mm -hmm. um, I think when I came around, they were like on the Space Migration Tour, but they were his backing band, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so they had been great friends with Mac, and I was kind of new coming around that. Um, and he embraced me too. Um, yeah, that was really sweet. Um, yeah. All right. All right, well, well, let's get sure. Steve Lacey out of here. Yeah, he, I know. He's, he's like, ready hey, to go. I did my part. No, I'm having fun. I can keep going, man. Y'all got some more questions for me. I don't want to leave now. Uh, I actually have to go do an interview. Good day, DC, live. So. See, so is she oh, got to go. Okay. Don't blame me. <laughs> no, but I really did enjoy having you here. I do love the project. You know, um, I could tell you I love Fouché on there. I think that was oh, a great yes. collab. Like I said, you know, I'm a girl, so that's like my... You know. No, she wrote like half the album with me. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's dope. And then the other one, um, Buttons. Oh, fire. Yeah. So. Damn, that's cool. You like those. Yeah. Thank you so much. So thank you so much for coming through. And I hope that when you decide not to do no more stuff, you still come up here. I'm going to come. <laughs> no, for real. Right. I doubt it. But it's going to be a pleasure to watch. No, I'm serious. I'm a fan of The Breakfast Club. I'm sorry. It's like that. crazy for me to be here. Man. The Breakfast Club, as you know it, no longer. Yeah, this, I mean, you, you made it before. <laughs> yeah, it, it, a lot of stuff is I'm about to change. Oh. Yeah, Angela leaves. Yeah. Wow. So this is kind of iconic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, that's why I wanted to make sure you got here before I left. So oh. We could do it. Damn, that's really special. Thanks for having me. It's Steve Lacey, y'all. It's Only the Breakfast 24 Club. years old. Can you believe it? You wow. got so much on the way. So congrats. Thank you, guys. 